Okay, now how do you whittle down 131 submissions from 21 countries to just five behind me and eventually the winner. We'll find out who that is later this year. This is all part of the Kane Prize for African writing. We've got this short list. There they are. Congratulations to them. Um, I sat down with uh, the chair of uh, the Kane Prize to find out all about the process of choosing. It's our 20th anniversary year. I, I was hoping for a shortlist that would really showcase the very best of, of talent from writers, both on the continent and in the diaspora, the, Af the African writers. And what we got, there's a story from Nigeria by Joho Ile, which is um, called Fisherman's Stew, which is about a, a widow who's longing for her husband, and he comes to visit her. And there's shifts in reality because for her, the visitation is very real. And it's just one, she's 67 years old. So he's writing about loss from the point of view of an older woman. It's so beautifully done. And she goes to the market to make fisherman's stew for her dead husband. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, you know, that is one example. There's another story called um, How to Marry an African President, which is written almost like an instruction manual. And I won't give too much away, but readers will recognize the woman who married the African president. And it's funny, it's quite wicked, it's um, very spare prose and quite satirical. And, you know, um, the other stories both give those, those kind of things, but it's a way of reflecting on either most recent politics or on wider themes of loss and love. Um, was there a mix of established and emerging talent in this year's pool? Yes, I'd really hope that we would find that. And I think it's also shown in the short story collection. So we have um, Irena Sun Okojia from Nigeria, who already has published a novel and two story, short story collections. Um, and then we also have, for example, um, Chikodini, who is another Nigerian writer who is very much at the, be the beginning of a career, although there's a, a body of work already there. And for me, it was really important that we didn't um, steer the Cain Prize towards being a prize for new writing, because it's not that. It's a prize for what the judges feel is the best short story that year. Do you find, though, that there are certain subtleties when you look at pieces from authors who live within the diaspora compared to authors who are still resident on the continent? If you put a series of stories in front of me and ask me to tell you which author is living on the continent or which author is living in the diaspora, I won't be able to do that. Sometimes you see a quality that's more about um, access to good editing. Mm -hmm. And that's not about skill or talent because it's equal across the board. It's about how the writer has, the journey the writer has made from writing to the, the story to the story being published. So right, writers who are being published, let's say in London or New York, have access to excellent editors. That is changing rapidly on the continent. There, there are more publishing houses. There are more people who are qualified as editors and who take their craft very seriously. So I think that shift, we're going to see the, the gap narrowing. And certainly, um, you know, we're a prize in the English language. But English is an African language. And so if you are a Zimbabwean, your English is not the same as your Nigerian cousin or your Tanzanian cousin or your Ghanaian cousin. There are different inflections that are informed by the languages you spoke at home. And that makes English completely different. And I think that's, that probably is what you are responding to as a reader, is the, are those other languages that are infusing the English that you are then reading.